joining me here. What I'm going to do is talk about the concept of unique IDs in Altium Designer. What I have up here on the screen is the dialog for an ECO process. And for those who may not necessarily be familiar with Altium Designer just yet, Altium Designer has a process in which we push information from the schematic side over to the PCB side. There are basically two netlists that Altium maintains. The netlist on the schematic side and there's a netlist on the PCB side. And Altium is going to compare both these netlists to see what differences there are and to try to reconcile them through the ECO process. Now one of the things that Altium relies on in this process are the unique IDs and these are assigned to the components. And by having these assignments it allows Altium to look beyond let's say the designators or changes to the designators and by having these unique IDs it allows Altium to build up the net lists that are specific to these components without a worry of whether or not it's connecting to the right designators or not. Now why should we care about that? Well Altium could possibly rely on the designators but there's a little bit of a problem with that. Normally in the process of doing your design there may be a desire to re-annotate and re-annotate means to basically change the designators and we can do that either on the schematic side of Altium or we can do it on the PCB side of Altium and then we can reconcile it later on but during that process where we change the designators in one of the editors well now the designators are different and how would Altium be able to tell uh, which component has its footprint and its corresponding symbol in each of the different net lists if the designators are different so to handle that type of thing what they created was something called a unique ID. It's something that Altium assigns and through the normal methodology of Altium Designer, it, the way you'd use it, you don't really have to worry about it. Now I'll talk about exceptions later on in this presentation, but let's just first and foremost just take a look at what a unique ID is. All right, what I have up here is a project that we've done here at 9.connects and we're looking at uh, a couple of components in this particular schematic and what we're going to do is we're going to jump into U1. Now we could have jumped into any component because what I'm going to show you pretty much stands for all these components as well but let's just take a look at U1. I'm going to double click into it to look at its properties. Now the properties in any given component are things like the parameters that we provide for it. These are what I'll call the user parameters. We also have our link to the footprint but on the left side we also have all of the system parameters that Altium Designer provides as well. All right, some of them we can change, some of them are provided by Altium and they're fixed. But one of the ones that they do provide is a unique ID and we can see it here in the top left hand corner. And this eight character code that Altium provides or this ID if you want to call it that is randomly chosen. Altium handles that for you. You don't have to make any mods or changes or anything of that nature as long as you're following the normal methodology. What we're going to do over here is I'm going to take a quick picture of that and show you what happens when we copy and paste the same component. So I'm going to take a picture of this. We now have this. All right, and we'll pull that down to the other screen here for just a moment and we're going to close this up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select U1. I'm going to do a control C and now I'm going to do a control V and paste it down. All right. Now I'm going to double click into our new component here, U, and by the way I'm just going to change something here. Now I'm going to call this U100 because later on uh, when we go into another feature of the tool we'll be able to easily distinguish it. So notice that everything here is the exact same as the original except for two things, which we just saw the designator. So the designator does get reset, it was U question mark, but notice that the unique ID did indeed change. And I'm going to bring up the Snagit editor so you can take a look at this. So there's a unique ID for the new one. Here's a unique ID for the old one. So the general rule is this, is that anytime you paste something down or anytime you place something from the library, Altium's going to create a new unique ID for it. And that is the general rule of thumb. Whether you're taking it from a library or you're doing a copy and paste, Altium will handle the unique ID for you. Now what does Altium do with this unique ID from let's say a component level? Let's close these up here for just a moment. Now I'm going to jump back over to our PCB doc okay, and we're going to look at U1 from the footprint perspective. So I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to select U1 and it's going to bring up its properties. If we look at the bottom right hand corner we're going to see its unique ID and just to bring up our Snagit here okay, and take a look, bring that right over there and there you go. The unique ID that we have 
for the symbol is the exact same unique ID that we have for the footprint. So through the normal methodology, we will design on the schematic side, we do the ECO process to push that netlist information to the PCB side, and when we do that, we also push the unique ID as well. Okay, and that just allows for a very tight correlation between the schematic netlist and the PCB netlist. Now, will the unique IDs get changed up? There are various reasons why, and we can fix them here in Altium Designer. So let me close this up here, the Snagit editor. I'm also going to close up U1 here for a moment. If we, for some reason, have a difference of unique IDs or we don't have unique IDs, and there are situations where we might not have unique IDs, we can fix that. And there is a tool in the PCB editor. It is under Project, and it's called Component Links. And let's bring this on up over here. And what the Component Links does over here is it evaluates all of the components that you have on the schematic side and the PCB side and it determines if the unique IDs have been matched up. So in our particular example over here, on the right side, we can see those things that do indeed have components that have both unique IDs that match up on the schematic and PCB side. So for example, for D1, this D1 over here, because it's in this list, indicates that the unique ID that you found on the schematics matches that of the PCB side. What we see here on the left are things which, for some reason, the unique IDs uh, are not there anymore. Uh, for example, in this particular project, and I shouldn't say they're not there, uh, let me rephrase that, that they are not corresponding. For example, a C4 over here on the schematic side indicates that this unique ID does not match with any other unique ID on the footprint side. This middle column over here is basically saying this C4 footprint on the PCB side does not match with any unique ID on the schematic side. So even though these probably are related to each other, and we can see that through the designator, somehow the unique IDs get changed. Now, granted, this particular project has been passed along by three different people in three different places. So there's probably, a lot, along the way, we deleted something, brought something back in. And that's why the unique IDs probably changed over time. To fix this, not a problem. What we do is we select C5 over here on the schematic side, and we say, look, we know that this corresponds with the footprint over here on the PCB side. And we can click this little arrow button to basically tell Altium that we believe these to be linked. Now, if you got a whole bunch of these and you're pretty sure that the annotations have not changed, you can simply press this button over here and you can match the pairs by the designators automatically. So we click on this and you'll notice that they've all been now matched except for one of them here. And then we can press this perform update and Altium will make sure that the unique IDs are properly matched up. Now, of course, with U1 U100 here, I created the symbol, but I don't have a corresponding footprint, and that's why we have this uh, lone component uh, sitting in this particular column. Now, when would you use this? Well, there's two scenarios. Well, obviously, there's a third one, which we just kind of went through, where the project has been changed and modified so many times here and there that uh, we've lost a little bit of conductivity, but obviously easy enough to fix. In other situations, if you are importing something into Altium Designer, more often than not, none of the other EDA tools really have this thing called the unique ID. So after you're done importing the schematic side and the PCB side, one of the first things you really want to do in your project is go into this particular dialog and add pairs match by button here so that you can match up all your designators and allow Altium to generate unique IDs for all of your components. I mean, they'll already have been created, but at least this will match them all up at that point in time. The other reason why I'd use this is something like snippets. And the concept of snippets we did talk about during our design reuse webinar. But I'll just kind of briefly go over this in relationship to what the unique IDs are all about. So let me close this out because this is the dialogue. And in order to get to my panels here, I got to close that out. What the snippet panel is, is basically a copy repository. So not normally when we do a copy, and then a paste. The minute we do another copy, we blow away what was in the copy buffer beforehand. This snippets acts as like an indefinite copy buffer. So all the things that you see over here are things I've been copying for the last couple of months. And they're going to remain in there until I basically delete them. Okay, so I can just simply go to this, right click here and delete the snippet, say yes and it's going to be removed at that point in time. So one of the things that people use snippets for, for example, is that let's say they have a, a circuit they drew on the schematic and they really like it and they want to reuse it again. So they take a snag it of that particular circuit and they basically put it here in the snippets panel. And then they take its corresponding circuit on the PCB side and they also add that to the snippets panel as well. 
So later on in a new project, then they copy this little snippet from the schematic side out to the new project. They do the same thing for the PCB side. But then what they have to do in order for those for the, both the schematic representation and the layout representation to match up with each other, they do need to go into project component links and then they would have to match those up at that point in time. The last thing I want to talk to you about here when it comes to unique IDs is a little situation that you might get into if you are copying specific documents. Now let's go back over here to my project here and I'm going to go back into our top page. Let's say, for example, okay, let's zoom this out. You're putting this together, and then through various discussions, there's an agreement that you really needed to have two of these on your board. So you've already drawn this up, and you're looking at this and saying, you know what? I don't really want to try to jam all this onto the same page. I just want to duplicate the page. And what I'll do is I'll change out the designators on the other page, and I should be good to go. Well, there's a little bit of a problem with that, because when we copy on the file level, we also copy all of the unique IDs. So let me kind of go through this scenario for you. Let's say, for instance, I want to copy this and want to add it to my design. So I'm going to go into File, and then we'll do Save Copy As. And then what I'm going to do is I already have this set up. I'm just going to click this one here, but I'm going to overwrite it. So I at least have the title there. I'm going to press Save. And it's going to ask me to replace it, and that's fine. I'm going to say Yes. So I've now got this new file in the background that I want to bring into my project. So just because I did a copy of it doesn't mean it's in my project. So to bring it back into my project, or actually to bring it in for the first time, I'm going to right click on the PRJ PCB and I'm going to say Add Existing to Project. And when I go there, it's going to bring me to my project directory and there it is. I'm going to click on this, I'm going to press Open, and it is now a part of my project. Let's go back over here, double click on U1, and look at the unique ID. Okay. And again, let's bring up our Snagit editor here to copy that one more time. Now let's go to our new design, which is our duplicate. We double click into our duplicate here. It's now open. I'm going to zoom into U1. I'm going to double click on it. Let's bring that here to the forefront. And let's bring up our Snagit editor. And when we look at these, guess what? The unique IDs are the exact same. This will cause problems. Okay, We don't want this. So if you have decided to copy this in, there's a way to fix this, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's move our Snagit editor off here to the side. We will look at that here in just a moment. I'm going to close up this property here. So in order to change the unique IDs on this particular sheet, there's actually a tool for that in Altium Designer. I'm going to go into Tools, and I'm going to click on Convert. Okay, So Tools Convert, and I'm going to go into Reset Component Unique IDs. Okay. So um, I've got a couple of options here. I can just say reset duplicates. I prefer not to do this right now, especially if I already changed out all the designators. That could be kind of dangerous, especially since I've already got a PCB dock already set up. Really what I want to do is I want to just reset all component unique IDs, and I want to do it only on this document. And that's probably the safest bet that you can make here. I'm going to press OK, all right? And it's going to tell me it's now completed those. And now I'm going to press OK here. And just to demonstrate that these all got changed, let's double click into U1. Let's bring back its top left corner. And if you see it already, it definitely looks different. And I'll bring this up here so you can get a visual. So here again was the original, and here is the one that just got changed. Okay. So I hope that you found this uh, interesting. What I would hope that you could do for me is that if there are any questions or things that I had to gloss over just to kind of keep this short, or if there are things that uh, I didn't talk about whatsoever that are related to this, feel free to ask those questions and we'll respond to them. So thank you very much for your time and please do join us for our future webinars. We do them every single month and we'd love to have you there. You take care.